This video demonstrates methods on how to prepare otoliths for crack and burn as an alternate means of age determination. This method is useful for many species of fish, however we have chosen to show this technique on redfish otoliths. The, ent the entire process should take approximately 10 minutes. The location of the core is species specific. Be sure to familiarize yourself with the orientation of otoliths you'll be working with. Locating the core of an unfamiliar species may require some exploratory cuts if your sample size permits. In this example, we are aging redfish. The core of redfish otoliths is located roughly centrally but slightly nearer to the post rostrum and about midway between the dorsal and ventral edge. If you imagine a straight line between the dorsal edge of the tip of the rostrum and the center point of the post rostrum, you will intersect the area under which the core of the otolith lies. Occasionally, annulite can be seen from the surface of redfish otoliths, as is the case with Sebastes fasciatus, and these can be used as a rough guide. If the annulite can be seen, you can sometimes use their shape to infer the central point around which they circle, especially if they're well in towards the center. Be sure to use a pencil and not a pen to mark the cores. To break or crack an otolith in half, you can use your fingertips as demonstrated here. Place the otolith concave side down with the sulcus side up on the tip of your finger. With your other hand, place your thumbnail directly over the core and press hard. The otolith should split right down the center. For an alternative method instead of cracking, redfish otoliths in this video will be cut on an isomet saw which uses a diamond blade. This method is used if the otolith is too thick to break with your finger or if you need a completely flat surface for the burn, such as when the otolith is old or the annuli are narrow. To prepare the saw, set up a singular blade for cutting and use the flat chuck provided with the isomet saw. Press a piece of plasticine onto the flat face of the chuck. This will hold the otolith in place while the saw is cutting. Gently pull the arm down and press the plasticine against the blade. This will make a mark that you can use as a guide to align the core of the otolith for cutting. The reservoir should be filled with a 60 to 40 percent glycerin to water mixture until it covers the lowermost centimeter of the blade and add about 50 grams of weight to the cutting arm. Gently press the otolith into the plasticine and align the core to the mark. For the proper orientation of the cut, the long axis of the otolith has to be perpendicular to the blade or at least perpendicular to your preferred sectioning axis. Once the otolith is properly aligned, you can begin cutting. Because this is a single blade and the otolith is not embedded, it will cut through the otolith very quickly. Listen for the change in the sound as the saw is cutting. And be sure to stop the saw before the blade damages the chuck. After cutting, the otolith is ready to be burned. We use a small alcohol burner for burning because it burns cleanly. A candle can be used, but it will leave soot on the otolith. The burning is achieved by holding the cut or broken otolith with a pair of forceps just above a flame. When holding the otolith over the flame, the sectioned or cut surface will be perpendicular to the flame. Hold the otolith so that it is vis the visible flame is about one centimeter below and below the main body of the otolith not just below the cut surface. The burning should only take 3 to 10 seconds and you'll want to watch this carefully as you only want to burn the otolith slightly until it turns a coffee shade of brown and you can start to make out the individual annuli. When you have finished burning, secure the otolith in some plasticine so it can be imaged. When pressing the burnt otolith into the plasticine, use caution as the otolith will be very hot from the burning process, so be sure not to touch it with your hands. All imaging is done using an image analysis system, or IAS. We use a Nikon SMZ1000 stereoscope connected to the computer with an Olympus DP72 digital camera and ImagePro software to capture images. For good quality imaging, be sure that the surface of the cut is exactly perpendicular to the surface of the microscope lens. Place the otolith under the image analysis system. We try to control all ambient lighting while imaging, so turn off the overhead lab lights and apply some light obliquely from an external light source and focus the image. Cedar oil is applied to the surface of the otolith to help enhance the annuli while under, under the IAS. The oil is critical for viewing the annuli under the microscope as the growth bands will be virtually uninterpretable unless oil is put on the surface. If you look at the otolith under the microscope without the cedar oil, you will see almost nothing.
We use cedar oil because it is non-toxic and has a pleasing smell, but any type of non-toxic oil can be used. Center the otolith on the screen and make sure the focus is adjusted so that you can get the clearest image possible. If the fish is old, for example 30 plus years, it may be necessary to take two images, one of the entire cut surface and one image of higher magnification that zooms in on the area adjacent to the sulcus. Adjust the zoom on the microscope so that the magnified image fills the preview window. Readjust the focus and take the second image. Save the images to a folder and then use Adobe Photoshop to enhance the images. When you are ready to enhance the images for aging, open the image in Photoshop. Use the lasso tool to trace the otolith. An alternative method is to use the magic wand tool to select the otolith itself, but it is often easier to use the magic wand to select the background first and then go to the select menu and pick the inverse. Once the otolith is isolated, we'll make enhancements to the image that will apply only to our selection. Select Image, Adjustments, Levels. Move the white slider bar over to the left until it meets the rise of the histogram. This will enhance the white levels until just before the point that the image is overexposed or washed out. Do the same with the black slider. Darken the image until just before the point that the edge of the otolith is lost. Click OK. The selection of the otolith image is not critical and can be done very roughly. In fact, it doesn't need to be done at all as long as you realize that the interpretation of the gray level histogram will include the background. <clears throat> Next we use the Unsharp Mask tool. This is a more powerful tool and quite different from contrast enhancement. Choose Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. The amount field can range between 100 and 300 percent. Radius can range from 7 to 30 pixels. 15 is good for otoliths. And the threshold should be set at a low level, usually around 1 or 2. You will need to play around with these amounts until you achieve your desired effect. If the histogram expansion and unsharp mask do not reveal any annuli, as is the case with some deep sea shark verts, try image adjustments equalize for the most aggressive enhancement possible. Save the image as an enhanced image. Once the image of the otolith has been enhanced, you should now be able to interpret the annuli to age the otolith. Create a new layer in Photoshop so that you won't be marking on the original image and use the paintbrush tool to annotate each annuli. The annuli should be visible as paired light and prominent dark lines radiating outward from the core. Keep in mind that not every line is a yearly ring and look for overall broad patterns to count. If no dark lines are visible, try reburning the otolith. Work outward from the core to the edge, annotating each annuli as you go. In the example of the redfish, we generally count out along the horizontal axis to age the younger annuli. We then count downwards along the sulcus to age for the older annuli as they are more reliable along this axis. This is not always the case for other species. The annuli nearest the core are generally furthest apart as this is when the fastest growth occurs when a fish is a juvenile. Later annuli nearest the edge, such as would be seen in an old fish, tend to be closer together and more regular in spacing, coinciding with the onset of maturity. Ease of interpretation of annuli will improve with both experience and the degree of sample preparation.